Hello and welcome everybody to the Twins Off Daily Podcast brought to you by the fine folks at twinsdaily.com, your finest source for independent coverage of the Minnesota Twins, the finest source in all of the interwebs. Here we are, everybody. We're here with our trade speculation preview. I am gathered here with uh, my two compadres, Mr. Gregory Masterson. How are we doing, friend? I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm I'm kind of enjoying this little break from watching the twins, but I'm sure that, you know, by the time I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to be real real antsy to get some twins baseball going again. Yeah, well, we're, we're almost there, but for now, here we are with our All-Star Podnanza and of course our good friend Cody Schoenman. What's going on, Cody? Um, nothing much. Uh yeah, two you know, instead of the time being spent to watch the Twins, I've been playing college football 25 the last couple of days. It's been a lot of fun. I've totally revamped the Gophers program. I think I'm ranked second in the nation right now. I've changed like the offensive approach to an air raid. So I've been spending a lot of time productively. So I'm, Oh, you're one of those. I'm one of those guys. Yeah. So I've, yeah, that's pretty much what I've been up to with the Twins off. Hashtag hire Cody. If there are any <laughs> programs out there looking for somebody to shake things up, we got just the guy for you, but he will not come cheap. And with that down, let's talk about, let's just dive right into it. We want to talk about some Minnesota Twins trade speculation as we start to approach the uh, fateful day, July 30th at, I believe, 3 p.m. Central is the MLB trade deadline. Um it's it was pretty fun last year. I think it's going to present some challenges this year, just based on the overall standings. I think like thirteen of the fifteen National League teams are still within uh, reaching within reach of a playoff spot, so that could make things rather interesting. Uh, guys, what are your kind of initial reactions here, just on the trade market in general? Uh, some of the challenges that are presented to the Twins as they look for improvements. Uh, what do we think? Let's start with you, Cody. Any initial thoughts before we dive into actual targets? Yeah, so the league lacks parity, and that's been a big storyline this year. I think at, at least a couple of weeks ago, I think 25 of the 30 teams in Major League Baseball were, were within five games of 500. So it's really hard to read the market and know who's going to trade what, especially when it comes to star players. I know early in the season, a lot of people were thinking like, oh, the Mets are going to trade Pete Alonso, obviously, or oh, like the Red Sox will trade somebody like Kenley Jansen. And now with them in contention for wildcard spots and, you know, there being the extra playoff spot, it makes it unlikely that they will actually part way part ways with those players. So overall, I expect the market to be, to be pretty quiet this year. I think there will be like relievers moved. I think, you know, every year, every year there's going to be relievers. Like you can get some guys from the A's. You could get some guys from like maybe the Nationals, teams like that. But I wouldn't expect something huge. Like, I know a couple of years ago, like, Justin Verlander was traded to the Astros. Zach Greinke was traded to the Astros. There's been huge trades like that. I honestly wouldn't expect that. And if it did happen, I would be pretty shocked. Like, I know if you listen to baseball today, Trevor Plouffe threw out the idea of trading Jackson Holiday for Tariq Skubal. And, like, that would be, like, a huge trade. But I just don't see it happening because the Tigers can maybe convince themselves that they're still in playoff contention, Right. So it's a very interesting market, um, and I wouldn't expect too many moves, and I think that goes for the Twins as well. That's really interesting, especially I'm sure we'll touch on a lot of different relief pitcher targets. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that just kind of crossed my mind when we were kind of preparing for this show is how frustrating it is that so many of these ideal trade targets, these relief arms that are going to be available and highly sought after, were available in the offseason for like a one-year, $4 million contract like very reasonable prices and uh the twins just did not have any money that they could spend and invest in in some of these targets so it's just so frustrating because it's like okay now if you want them you need to trade you need to put together a package that's better than every other contending team that surely wants this arm too um so that's that's kind of frustrating but greg what do we think any initial thoughts you know, actually, I'm going to I'm going to counter what you just said about, oh, you know, a lot of these guys could be had for four million dollars over the offseason. Yeah. Uh, every single year, there are a lot of relievers who could be had for four million dollars over the offseason. And a lot of them burn out and a lot of them turn into, you know, reasonable trade pieces. And if you're just going to, you know, decide this is the one guy we're going to give this four million dollars to, you know, that can, you know. You might have them on your team right now and you don't have to worry about trying to outbid other teams for them. 
but at the same time, you know, you don't actually, uh, maybe you wouldn't have uh, you, the guy that you spent $4 million on would be, you know, exactly where you are right now. He would be useless or, you know, maybe pitching the the fifth or sixth inning for you right now. So I don't really appreciate the way that you're talking about <laughs> the decisions made. How dare you? I'm a, nothing but a blatant homer. Uh, I, I do want to say it's a little frustrating that right now we're kind of speculating over what pe- what teams we're going to do. Cody mentioned that now that there is an additional playoff team in each league that, you know, lowers the bar for trying to get in. You've got a few more teams who are wanting to be or don't haven't committed yet quite yet to being sellers. And, you know, we're having this conversation during the all-star break and teams only have what after the, after the all-star break is done, we will start playing again on Friday, the 19th. The trade deadline is the 30th. That's 11, games. 12 yeah. games. Yeah. Like 12 games right now, what the, the layout of the league that we're talking about, like unless some team goes, you know, and loses six, seven games in a row, there's not a ton of time in between now and then for a team to fall out of contention and then be convinced that they are not going to be players, which is just kind of frustrating. I'm not like in favor of moving the deadline back or anything like that, but you know, it's, it's just weird timing, like kind of all of this anticipation and we've only got like a week and a half worth of games after the all-star break for teams to, you know, um, crap or get off the pot um but yeah i it is you know especially with teams who are you know on the borderline of contention and might be able to talk themselves into contending next year that adds another wrinkle um for teams who aren't you know saying okay you know maybe we're on the borderline this year so if we have a player for a year and a half or two and a half years got multiple years of control they might be less inclined to make a move like that like if somebody like garrett crochet was on a borderline team right now um he would be much more likely to stay home um as opposed to if he's on the white Sox. um so that also kind of throws a wrench into it um it's a it's a weird it's a weird market this year and this might just be the new normal given the the additional playoff teams you know, you raised some interesting points and, you know, I'm just kind of going over my contract here. I'm not sure you're allowed to counter me like you did, <laughs> sadly. So uh, I am getting some breaking news here. Beep, 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 that the Twins Off Daily Podcast is on the verge of trading Gregory Masterson to Gleeman and the Geek. On the verge of trading Gregory Masterson to Gleeman and the Geek. For one, John Bonus and cash considerations. And uh, considering their massive Patreon pool, uh, we're going to be considering a lot of cash. So that's a lot uh, of cash. <laughs> yes, I will keep you. Uh, I'll keep you posted on that, uh, Gregory. Start packing your things. Uh, but oh, you know, you, you also made some really good points, um, and I, I will give you that. Uh, you know, you think about some of these teams, like the Pittsburgh Pirates. Let's say. Uh, they might have some interesting trade targets. However, they're uh, third place in their division at exactly 500. And this is after, what, they've had losing seasons every year since 2018. What does that say to their fan base if now that they're like kind of on the verge of contention and they still, you know, trade off some of these guys, uh, these targets that could help them, you know, push them to the next level? That's worth something. You know, of course, teams are always trying to be wise and conscious of the future, but I think they're also keeping it on the forefront of their mind that, hey, we've been rebuilding for years now. Maybe this is, uh, you know, the stepping stone to our next year of contention, if you know what I mean. So why don't we go right into it here? Uh, Let's talk about some trade ideas. Um, Who are some good targets that, uh, well, how about this? Let's talk about needs. Let's talk about the twins needs and what they could actually you know, theoretically be on the lookout for. Uh, The good news is they have the best team offense in baseball since the end of April. You know, they had that dreaded first month. And since then, their their offense overall has been absolutely rolling. Um, So I don't foresee too many needs in the lineup. What do you guys think? Is is, are they going to be in the market for a hitter uh, come July 30th? Yeah, I would. Cody, go for it. 
So, no, I don't think they will be, and I completely expect them to not trade for a hitter. I'm totally content with where the team is on the major league level and the depth that they have in the minors. I think this team is set offensively, and I do not expect them to trade for any hitters. That said, I think the team's needs rely on the pitching side. And, you know, in years past, what people wanted the Twins to do was acquire depth starting pitching. Like, you know, it'd be nice to get a guy – who is adjacent to Kyle Gibson or somebody who is adjacent to Lancelin maybe. But I think this team has a pitching depth in the starting rotation and what they need is a frontline starter. I think that is need number one, especially when it comes to the playoffs. Um, I know on Twins Daily, I think it was Cody Christie who wrote an article where the Twins trade deadline has to meet the Bailey Ober threshold, meaning like, can that pitcher be a better playoff starting pitcher than Bailey Ober? We know Lopez is going to pitch in the playoffs if the Twins make it. We know Ryan will, but can that player be better than Ober? So that's, I think, what option one should be. And another need, like every team, and I said this earlier, is that there needs to be maybe some bullpen additions. I know Greg wrote that the the, the, uh, Twins don't need another right-handed arm, and I mostly agree with that. But I think the team should look into acquiring a left-hand reliever, maybe. So I think, yeah, I mean, you make really good points, Lou, and I think the number one need is starting pitching, preferably a frontline starter, and number two, should they should look into relief help and specifically a left-handed reliever. Yeah, well said. Greg, anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty much on board. Um, I, I do want to say that, you know, I wouldn't be devastated if the Twins did pick up another right-handed pitcher, uh, right-handed reliever, um, if it costs, you know, very, very little and you can get some bullpen depth for the regular season, like I would be a bit indifferent on it. If you were able to say, find somebody who you could slot in among you, uh, Duran and Jax and Stewart in the back of the bullpen, I would be, I'd be down with it, obviously for the right price, but yeah, the, uh, the left-handed arm in the bullpen, I believe is the biggest thing, um, from the offensive side, I'd agree. I don't really see a glaring need with this offense. Um, I, to the extent that I would be. I, I would almost be more surprised if they added to the major league offense. Um, I would be more surprised if they did that than literally like traded away somebody who's a par- currently a part of that picture. Um, that's how much I don't believe that they need or will be spending uh, prospect resources on hitters really at any position. Well said. Very well said. Before we actually get into some uh, big top, you know, targets here, do you consider anybody that's currently on the Twins major league roster to be expendable enough in a trade like this for some of these targets? I know it obviously depends on on what you're getting in return, but do you see anybody being traded from the Twins big league roster uh, come the deadline? Uh, I mean, I don't know if I see it. Yeah. Um, I. I could understand it. Um, it, Like once you actually start doing kind of the math and it really depends on if everybody's healthy, right? There's a little bit of a potential crunch where in the infield right now, you know, you've got some sort of mix of Santana, um, Castro, Correa, Lewis, and Miranda. Maybe Julian is part of that mix at second base or at first base in the outfield. You've got Larnick, Walner, Buxton, uh, Kepler, also um, Castro. If you count that up, like that's that's eleven guys right now for uh, eight or ten guys for eight spots. Yeah. Um, so it, it becomes a little bit of a crunch to find, you know, the right mix to the extent that, like, if maybe even if uh, Trevor Larnick is hitting well, uh, he's not starting in the playoffs because they've got to put Willie Castro somewhere. Um, so I could see some sort of crunch like that. I could also though see them kind of getting bit in the butt for doing that. If, you know, three weeks after the deadline, all of a sudden you, you lose, I'm not even going to say a name, but somebody is out for a month and you don't have them down the stretch or maybe in the playoffs. And all of a sudden you've got Austin Martin starting every day. That could be an issue. Yeah, it could be Cody. Anything to add? Yeah, I agree with Greg. I remember a couple of weeks ago or on a prior episode, Tom Fromian brought up Max Kepler as a potential trade piece. And I kind of like the idea in theory, but I think the Twins will play it out with him. 
Um, I don't think any pitchers are expendable. I think this team actually needs to get pitching help, as we mentioned earlier. Yeah. Another name I want to broach is Kyle Farmer. I yes. know he is hurt and on the 10-day IL right now, but he should be off of it come the trade deadline. And he is mostly healthy, we think. We don't really know the extent of his shoulder injury. But I do, even with the current injury concern in the infield with Correa and the plantar fasciitis and Miranda's back, I think they will be fine. And Lewis should be back by the end of July, hopefully. So I think long term, not right now, but I think Farmer could still be expendable. Yeah, for both Kepler and Farmer, for very different values, obviously, I feel like, you know, probably um, unlikely, but certainly not impossible or, um, that they, they are moved. And if they are, I think it's in conjunction with a separate move, you know, clearing them to make way for somebody else as part of a bigger, you know, either a separate or a bigger deal. Uh, but, you know, especially for someone like Kyle Farmer, obviously he's not going to have a lot of value. The value in getting rid of Farmer is for the roster spot. Uh, Kepler is a little different because he still does provide some some value. Um, you know, he's he's having a streaky year, but he still definitely is a major league caliber, you know, regular. Whereas Farmer, you don't want him playing regularly. That means something has gone wrong. Um, how, I think, how would you guys feel if like Kepler got traded for uh, the equivalent of like a Darren Bowen, maybe a step below that, like somebody in like your late twenties. Yeah, I think this team needs Kepler for the rest of the year and into the, into the postseason. Like I know he's had a pretty middling year overall. I know his OPS plus is around one hundred, but I think there's a lot of value with him come playoff time. I still don't trust Walner or Larnick. I mean, that's just me personally, but like. I could see Larnick regressing. I could see Walner falling into a strikeout slump again. And then if you rely on them full time and you don't have a guy like Kepler anymore, like what are you going to do? Put put Martin in the outfield more? I mean, I know Willie could take a spot, but overall I, th- I think Kepler is still a necessary part to this Twins team for this year. Yeah, that's, that's well said. And uh, it's kind of tricky too because um... – you know, I lost my thought. Why don't we jump right into targets before we get too <laughs> off track here? Uh, I think that's probably for the best because I think we could ramble on this for a good long while. And I imagine it's a topic that we're going to keep talking about in future episodes too. So I want to hear it. Who is your most prime target for the Twins to go after at this deadline? And uh, what do you think that it would cost them in return? Let's start with you, Cody. Who's your number one option that you want to see the Twins go out and look at in a trade? So my number one option actually plays in the AL Central right now, and it is Detroit Tigers starting pitcher Jack Flaherty. Mm. So Jack Flaherty, he's on a one-year deal with the Tigers, so that means there's no long-term financial ramifications, meaning the Twins could get him, pay him the remaining, say, five to six million left, and then get off of it, and ownership doesn't have to worry about paying him long-term, which is necessary to consider when valuing who they are going to trade for. If a guy's in a multi-year deal, say like Nathan Eovaldi or somebody like that, the Twins aren't going to you know, trade for him because they're not going to pay him $20 million next season. Uh, regardless, I do like Flaherty a lot. He does have some health concerns. I think he has a back issue, but he's performed great with Detroit this year. He's been probably their number two starting behind Tariq Skubal, who is arguably the best pitcher in the AL. Right. Yeah. So, But still, I mean, that's nothing against Flaherty. He's been great. I think he would... He's in consideration, honestly, to be the Twins' number one or game one starter if he was on the rotation, you know, for the playoffs, considering how things have gone this year with Pablo. Um, but it would it would take a hefty price tag. The Twins would need to give up a lot. I think it would start with another pitching prospect, probably somebody who's close to the majors. I don't know if I'd go as far as Zebby, but maybe like you you could get him in a one for one, like Zebby Matthews for. Jack Flaherty, but that would be a lot to stomach. Maybe somebody like Marco Raya or Andrew Morris would be more palatable. I think it would take more than that, though, even. I think yeah. you do maybe Morris plus a player like Tanner Schobel or maybe even Gabby Gonzalez, depending on how high you are in him. Personally, I'm pretty low on him as a prospect, so I'd be fine giving up, say, Andrew Morris and Gabby Gonzalez for a guy like Jack Flaherty. But Overall, like I said, I think frontline starter is most important and Flaherty would be my top rental for the season. Yeah, it's an interesting pick. You know, Flaherty's kind of got the name behind him. He had some really solid years with the Cardinals um, and uh, he was a prime trade candidate just last year, right? Did, he got traded to the Orioles at the deadline last year, I believe. It yeah, Cardinals to the Orioles. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's a pretty prime target. Um, 
I'm, I'm guessing so he's eligible to get the qualifying offer at the end of the year if he sticks with the Tigers obviously not if he's yes. traded to another team but if he sticks with the Tigers and if he finishes out the year with the half that he's having you know following his excellent first half he's I mean it's probably a conversation right one year 20 million dollar year for a high-end starting pitcher like that that sounds kind of fair to me and uh obviously if the Tigers extend that qualifying offer to Flaherty and he declines it, they get a pick uh, early on in the draft, probably right after the first round, knowing where they are uh, in in the uh, in the in the pecking order here. But mm-hmm. so that the, the package would have to be something bigger than a, you know, pick, you know, in the back half of the top 50 of next year's draft. So that's that's an interesting name. And I think that it would get a lot of people really excited, though. So I like that a lot. Greg, how about yeah, you? That's, who's your, who's that's, your number um, one? I, I want to just kind of like contextualize like what that would be worth. Um, basically, like the get in price is Charlie Soto for a trade like that. Um, if yeah. you're if you're at home trying to figure out like, OK, what does that mean? Because if they if they hold on to him, they're going to essentially get the same pick that got the twins, Charlie Soto last year. Um, and Charlie Soto, depending on who your whose list you're reading is probably one of the top three pitching prospects right now in the organization, somewhere around there, definitely a top five organizational guy. Basically if the tigers don't get somebody who, they, or like a package that they see is like equivalent to that, it's just going to be a no go. And so that's the get in price. And then beyond that, you have to start kind of bartering and trying to figure out, okay, who, which team is going to go the furthest over that guy. Um, yes. And then if you, if you want to look at it from this year's perspective too, I mean, they picked Kyle DeBarge in the compensatory round this year, the shortstop. So and he's probably going to be a top 10 prospect in the system, maybe top 12. So, yeah, I mean, either way you cut it, it's going to be one of your top pitching prospects or one of your top hitting prospects. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. if, we're, if we're talking about prospect lists, I think we definitely have to mention Twi- uh, Twins Daily's prospect rankings that the writers and everybody put together. Right now, uh, before the update that's coming shortly, uh, they have Charlie Soto at uh, the Twins' number seven prospect. Um, so that's – and the Twins have a pretty good – pretty good farm system for the most part. I would say that they're in the top half of farm systems in all of baseball um, right now. So that's, you know, like you said, if that's just the get in price, that's pretty steep for what, two months of a pitcher, uh, of a starting yeah. pitcher. Greg, let's go back, uh, back to the question here. Who's your number one target that the twins should look at? Yeah, my, I'm going to kind of follow up with Cody um, on the same topic. I would, I would love to see them go get Yusei Kikuchi. Um, I would assume that, a lot of the same kind of packages that Cody threw out there would probably apply fairly comparably to Kikuchi. Uh, Both Flaherty and Kikuchi are on expiring deals. I do want to point out that the twins in the past have really shied away from like true, I guess uh, what a lot of people call them, you know, rental players. I've got a list really quick of all of the one year trades that the twins have ever made. And that's Sandy Leone, Dylan Floro, Jaime Garcia, Michael Fulmer, Sergio Romo, Gary Sanchez, Anthony DiSclefani, and Michael A. Taylor. So you're not talking about, you know, high level players. You're not talking about somebody, you know, they're, they generally don't make those types of trades. But right now with the financial position that ownership has them in, um, this might be a time where you could see them kind of break that trend and say, yeah. um, you know, I that they would be okay with picking up uh, expiring contracts um, and be okay with trading away from what's turned out to be a fairly deep and nice farm system. Um, so I would love to see them go after Kikuchi. Again, he's on an expiring deal. He's got, and it's always important to kind of know this, he's got for the rest of this season, uh, he's owed $4.2 million about. Um, so it'd be nice if they were able to get them to pick some of that up. I could see the like a package being something like, um, say, Gabby Gonzalez and Darren Bowen, for example, as a potential. A lot of times that teams do like to get back pitchers in trades, and Bowen is somewhat far down on the Twins list, um, though you know starting with Gabby Gonzalez, depending on your opinion of him, can be a little bit of an issue. Um, But I also think that 
Kikuchi might be the top um, rental that you're going to see moved at the draft or at the <laughs> trade deadline this year. Prices might get boosted up if you're able, especially if you're able to get uh, Toronto to cover a little bit of his salary coming back. Those are all things to be aware of, but I would love to see them go get Kikuchi. It's an interesting name to keep an eye on for sure. So if they were to get Kikuchi, assume, I assume that he would go right into their rotation. What's the corresponding move? Do they move Paddock off of there? Do they move him to the bullpen? Do they put somebody on the aisle? What's the deal? Yeah, and I mean, that's that's a lo- another part of the kind of calculus with this type of move as we're talking about, you know, they shouldn't just find somebody to f- eat innings. It should be somebody. I'm in agreement with Cody on that, and I think that you are too, Lou. Um, part of that is that, you know, you probably, gosh, I, I could I could actually see them. And it's it. you've seen it around the league a few times this year already where guys are demoted just because of team needs. I could see them moving Simeon Woods Richardson to AAA for like three weeks or something like that. Um, but I think lo- long term by the end of the season, you're probably moving Chris Paddock to the bullpen because he's shown that he can be a fine reliever down the stretch last year. I think that that's probably what the move would be. Yeah, I agree. I think knowing how the Twins operate and knowing how much they value veteran depth, the move would be to option Woods Richardson to AAA and keep Paddock in the in the bullpen. They could keep seven relievers maybe and do a six-man rotation, but that won't happen. We know that's just not something the Twins would ever do, uh, whether right or wrong. So I agree with Greg. The answer would be to demote Woods Richardson to AAA probably. Yeah, that's which sucks. Yeah, <laughs> that would be tricky. Especially. I would hate to have that conversation. Yeah, but you know what? Stuff happens. Um, a couple of the targets that uh, that came to mind for me, uh, they both play for the uh, reigning champion Texas Rangers, and they're both relief pitchers. Uh, one of them is David Robertson, who I feel like is always a topic at the trade deadline coming up here. He it's been like 20 there- years of this conversation. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's up there in age. Uh, he is uh, about 50 years younger than old Greg. He's 39 uh, right now. So he's he's late, later on, long in the tooth. But he is having just another awesome year for the Rangers in, I think, a mostly setup role, if I'm not mistaken. He's got a 288 ERA with a 223 expected ERA. So, like, he's – or is that fielding independent pitching? Yeah, yeah. Um, 283 expected ERA. So like his his numbers are pretty much right on. He's got 13.5 strikeouts per nine, uh, and that's very very strong, obviously. So uh, I think he would be a prime target. He's a free agent at the end of the year. He has a mutual option with the team, which let's be honest, that means nothing. Nobody ever uh, triggers a mutual option. Uh, so he could be an interesting arm to be had. And I don't think that he would cost one of their top prospects by any means. I feel like every year we come into this, uh, it, the trade deadline and relief pitchers, it, it costs something for sure, but it's never like a top prospect that you're worried about. Like they're not going to be have uh, Walker Jenkins in the conversation or Emmanuel mm-hmm. Rodriguez in the conversation. It's going to be closer to the back end of that top 10 uh, at, at most, I got to think. So uh, the other one that I was going to say was Kirby Yates, who actually just made an appearance in the All-Star game last night and is having himself another fine year. He does have a pretty extensive track record with injuries, but this year, boy, he's just been stellar. 34 innings pitched, 1.05 ERA. Uh, He has just been absolute bull ones for the Texas Rangers too. He has 12 strikeouts per nine, uh, a little bit higher walk rate uh, than you'd probably be super comfortable for, but that could work in the twins favor as the return package could maybe be brought down just a little bit. So both of those guys, I would be very ecstatic. Uh, I think they would pair very well with Griffin Jackson, Juwan Duran, so that you're not so worried about uh, if they can pitch in back-to-back games or three out of four games, stuff like that. Uh, So I would love to see them, but you know what, let's move on and let's talk about um, just real quick here. Maybe we can talk about some kind of wild card trades or some other secondary options that would be really interesting for the twins to explore. Cody, do you have anybody else that you thought that would be, uh, would raise your eyebrows a little bit? 
Yeah, um, I just want to say it really quick. I do love the idea of Yates or Robertson. I mean, they would instantly slot in to be a top three guy. Debate yeah. on who maybe Stewart when he comes back or Alcala might you know be ahead of them. But yeah, those those are great ideas. Um, I want to broach the left-handed reliever, um, you know, topic a little bit more. I know a couple of weeks ago you wrote about Garrett Clevenger. Is it Clevenger from the Rays? Yep. He's a very enticing option, and I would love if they uh, picked him up. I know you mentioned TJ McFarlane from the A's, too. He's a good option. But I kind of have been interested in the idea of, like, a challenge trade or two contenders trading, like, you know, you know, getting together on a trade. And there's a pitcher on the Red Sox whose name is Brennan Bernardino. He's been great this year. He's probably their top lefty arm, or, like, he is their top lefty arm. He has a sub-3 ERA. He's pitch around 33 innings and he's been incredible for the Red Sox and their revamped, you know, pitching staff. I think he'd be some, somebody interesting to target. Now it would take a lot since the Red Sox are directly below the twins in the standings. Like yes. it would need to be a value for value. The Red Sox have, um, they're struggling at second base this year. I think, um, WRC plus wise, they rank second to last in major league baseball with a 68 WRC plus at the position. So they could, maybe in the, be in the market for a second baseman. I think Edward Julian could maybe work in Boston. I know it'd be pretty aggressive, but I think maybe if you trade Julian for Bernardino plus a prospect in the uh, Red Sox system, maybe another infield prospect kind of just to like offset the loss. I know Luke, Luke Kieschel's ascension kind of makes it easier to maybe get rid of a guy like Julian because he could maybe contribute next season, early next season. So I think maybe a challenge trade where you send a guy like Julian to the Red Sox for a left-handed reliever plus somebody in their system could be mutually beneficial. I mean, Twins need a lefty arm. The Red Sox need a second baseman. I think you could get together on the same page and benefit each other while you're contending for the second and third playoff spot. Something interesting like that I think would be fun. That piqued my interest for sure. How about you, Greg? Any uh, kind of challenge trades or any any kind of wild cards that you could throw up? Wild cards? No. I would love to, if we're going to be talking about left-handed relievers, I'd be remiss to not throw out Tanner Scott as a preferable. Um, he kind of is the best of both worlds with the Marlins right now. Um, he's a he's a rental as well. He's you know he'll he'd only pitch for for two months. I would be, you know, interested to see what sort of package they would end up. One thing that I'm actually just kind of watching, and I've seen it in recent years, is th- for a while at the trade deadline, there was kind of like a, um, what's what's the money ball word? Um, market inefficiency mm-hmm. um, for the multi-year trades. Um, and it seems like the league has kind of come around to – properly value multi-year trades to almost and kind of lower the values of um, your kind of relievers. And so I'm always curious to kind of watch what ends up getting sent off. Cause I believe David Robinson last year, for example, once he got traded, gosh, I can't remember where he ended up getting traded to last year. The Marlins, Did he get, the Mets to yeah. the Marlins. And it like I believe that that was a trade that everybody was like, wait, what they what did they give up for him? It's so kind of all over the place. It could be something that somebody's super excited about. It could just be like, oh wait, did nobody else trade? Like, did anybody else offer anything? Um, so especially these like one year relievers, I'm all I'm I'm loving kind of watching like market patterns on that. So I would love you know. For that to be Tanner Scott, and it's really hard to kind of throw out like what level of prospect it would take to do something like that. I think that Scott probably is kind of at the top of a lot of teams lists. If they're looking for any sort of lefty, you probably want to run after him. Um, but that's that's the other trade that I would say that if Kikuchi and Scott end up coming to Minnesota, they have get an A plus for the trade deadline. Um, but I would love to see, you know. Falvey work his magic and find some lefty that nobody's ever heard of who, you know, puts together 20 innings of one run ball or something like that. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I think uh, the wild card that I was kind of imagining too, uh, I brought up the Pittsburgh pirates earlier. Um, 
I had David Bednar on here, and he is kind of a fan favorite because he's from Pittsburgh himself. And it would be a really tricky trade because the Pirates, like I said, are currently at 500 at 48 and 48. So it might be really tough to get them to sell a local guy who's beloved by the fans uh, when they're finally back, you know, creeping towards contention. But let's say they stumble out of the gates, they lose like their next eight games and just are decide to be selling. Um, I could see him being an enticing option uh, because since so on the year, he has like a 501 ERA, which is not very enticing, but that was after a brutal April. Um, and since May 1st, um, he has pitched 22 innings to a to the tune of a 2.01 ERA um, and a 3.25 fielding independent pitching to show that, you know, his his stuff is still working pretty well. Um, he. uh Still, he comes with a couple years of team control, I believe. Um, But now we're talking about what the package in return would have to be. It wouldn't center on this guy from the Twins, but maybe softening the blow of trading a local product for the Pirates would be to get one in return. And I'm thinking Alex Kirilov, who is a fellow Yinzer, uh, going back to the Pirates as a secondary piece. Obviously, it would take a little bit more than that. Would it take someone like Julian? Would it take somebody, uh, you know one of their, uh, you know, prospects who have yet to debut in the big leagues, but are are approaching that quickly. Um, That could be an option. I don't see this as a likely trade by any means, but it certainly is interesting, especially if we can uh, find a way to get Alex Kirilov back home in Pittsburgh. Uh, I think that would be really interesting. Another one that I didn't do any prep work for that I also would love to see the twins uh, make a trade for, and it might be more realistic in the off season, is Max Meyer of the Miami Marlins. Uh, He's from Minnesota. Um, He he started the year in the rotation and was awesome for like three, four, five starts, something like that. And then they sent him back down. He's coming off pretty significant injuries over the past two years, so they're being really careful with his usage, and I think that had more to do with it. But if the Twins could find a way to get Max Meyer back in, you know, back in Minnesota and in their system, he's got a great fastball. He's got an awesome slider. Um, I think that he has the chance to stick as a starting pitcher, and he has uh, what six years left of team mm-hmm. control after this one. So if the Marlins are doing sort of a hard reboot with their new front office and trying to get value for for some of these guys, I'd like to see the Twins make a call to Max Meyer. But yeah, Meyer's very enticing. Um, he is post Tommy John too, so there mm-hmm. is like less concern there. I think the Marlins sent him down because they want him to work on a changeup as a third pitch. He's pretty mm. limited right now in his repertoire, so that's something interesting the Twins could help him on. I do want to throw out one more idea really quick, if you don't mind. Sure. So, um, I love the Kikuchi idea, and the Blue Jays do have a reliever in Genesis Cabrera. He's a lefty. Ooh. He's somebody enticing too. So how would you guys feel, say, if the Twins got Kikuchi – and Cabrera, it's like killing two birds with, with one stone. Like they get both their knees right there in one trade, but they, they need to send off somebody like Keyshole or Festa. How would you feel about that type of trade? I, if it was just for one of those guys, I think that would that would be very enticing. I find it hard to believe that that would be the case. I think it would take a lot more, mm-hmm. especially with the the Blue Jays. Uh, you know, they've been really competitive over the past handful of years and now they're kind of dipping. So it's a tricky spot for them. I don't think they want to sell low, mm-hmm. but it's a very interesting concept for sure. Yeah. And they also right now, they, I mean, they've mentioned like, I, I can't remember if you did say this or not, that they're a little bit uh, against moving guys who have more than one year of team control yeah. right now. I, I apologize. My cat was making a bunch of noise, so I'm not sure if I if you mentioned that. I didn't hear um, me. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that that's another like factor that kind of I don't know. Like sometimes you just kind of have mental blocks of trying to like make a trade work in your head when you're like, oh, well, if they're committed to this not being a just a complete sell off, and it's a uh, uh, competitive rebuild or whatever, um, retooling, whatever. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm a little, I'm a little skeptical that something like that would end up getting done, but yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, you know, I think we presented some really good options before we take off here. Do you guys have any just like favorite trade deadline acquisitions that the twins have made over the years that really stand out that you're like, Oh yes, I was hoping they would get them or fill this need. And they went out and got it. I'm so excited for that. I have a couple that come to mind that I'll start out with. 
Um, I believe, what was it? The summer of, was it 2006? It was either 2006 or 2009 when they went out and traded for Orlando Cabrera. Uh, Nine. He, that was 2009, yes. Uh, he was exactly what they needed, and he came in and really owned for them for, for those two months and uh, pushed them to the playoffs. So I loved that one. And at the time, I was really excited for the Matt Caps trade, the trade that sent Wilson Ramos to the Nationals for a proven closer in Matt Caps. And you know what? He served his role really well for the rest of that season as the team's closer. Uh, I, I seem to forget what happened after that, but let's not even talk about it. How about you I was actually at his first game closing. Um, just I just so happened to be in town, and I, I didn't know a ton about Matt Caps, but I was very high on Ramos, and so I was like, "Oh well, if he's worth Ramos, then this guy must be legit." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I thought that I was at the uh, the beginning of like the torch being handed off from yeah. Joe Nathan to this new guy, Matt Caps. Um, I'm going to be straight up. I. I liked and I still liked what the uh, the Twins did at 2022 at the deadline. Yeah, it, it blew up. And obviously, if you were paying attention, you probably also had questions about Tyler Malley. You probably had questions about Jorge Lopez. Like, is this a half year fluke with Malley? What is going on with his arm right now? Um, but then you like looked at the the package that they uh, they gave up for them. And it's like, did they they really didn't on paper at the time they did not give up like a king's ransom for these two guys i think that they kind of tried to maybe split the middle a little bit too much where you take a couple of risks but we've seen that this administration loves administration is that the right word <laughs> we're going, with it. We're going with it. <laughs> president derek uh loves uh taking some risks if he thinks that he can get a deal and hope that it turns out well i still don't hate what they did at that deadline i would be just fine with them having a, another deadline like that mm -hmm. and I would be just fine with it blowing up on in our faces again um if it does happen um because you know they were fine they were fine moves they were exciting they were addressing needs that everybody identified that they had michael fomer wasn't too bad so at least yeah. there was that yeah it's a good point. Cody, any favorites come to mind for you? Uh, yeah, no, I agree with Greg. I was ecstatic about Lopez and Mally at the trade. Um, obviously, it blew up, but I mean, I still love the process, and I hope the Twins have a similar state of mind in their decision-making. You know, the money makes it complicated. But overall, I was just, I was excited about Sergio Romo and Sam Dyson in 2019, yeah. too. I was really pumped. I mean, you know, Sam Dyson was a horrible person and bad or is a horrible person and was bad for the twins. So that blew up too. But Romo was really good for a couple of years. Yeah. And I want to say too, on the other end of the spectrum in 2021, when they sold off Barrios for Austin Martin and Woods Richardson, yeah. that was very exciting too. Like obviously the twins were horrible that year, but it was kind yeah. of fun to see your team deal a bona fide like a frontline starter for two top prospects i know martin at the time was like top 50 consensus consensus in baseball maybe so yeah. like that was a lot of fun that was a huge deal and um it, i i think trades like those are really exciting yeah, well said. I think you guys are crazy for loving uh, the trade deadline of 2022. I, an intellectual, actually Googled <laughs> Tyler Malley shoulder injury, and I knew exactly what they were getting into. So uh, I think you guys are crazy. But Lou, just you've got to touch the stove to know it's hot sometimes. Yes. Just to know that you can still feel something. You know that those, those trades made me feel something, and that's all I watch baseball for is for the shenanigans. Yeah, sorry I didn't Google Mally's shoulder, guys. Sorry I didn't do that. Oh, dear. You know what? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, I uh, am I, out on Tyler Malley. <laughs> you know, I think before we get into too much trouble, I think that uh, this might be a good place to uh, bid adieu on day, what is this, day four of our five-day all-star pod Nanza. Do you know any other baseball podcasts that are doing five straight shows uh, on their off days? Because I don't, and if there are any, I would like to join them and start getting some money for this. So let me know if you find any. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's chat again tomorrow, boys. Uh, this has been really fun, and uh, we're gonna have some more shenanigans for you coming up. Anything else you guys would like to say before we bid adieu? Uh, shout out Shannon Stewart. <laughs> Always. Bye. Always.
I hope the Twins are active during the deadline. I don't think they will be, but I hope that they are. And I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, I uh, I, I hope just the league in general. I hope it's an active deadline and it's it, it bucks the trend that I, I see happening. Um, I hope that it's really fun and there's a lot of buzz and I am very distracted from work that day because I yeah. always – I love those yep. days. Yep. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll do some extra – if my bosses are listening, I will do some extra work leading up to it and I will uh, stay late the next day. But uh, I'm going to be on Twitter an awful lot during that deadline. So I'm driving um, during the deadline. It's going to be a, a miserable day for me gregory <laughs> no no tweeting while you're driving please no. okay you're, you're yeah, the camera will pick ice. me up and i'm going to get suspended again yes yeah <laughs> we can't have that because if we do we're going to hear from you non-stop and i, yeah. I can't take the notifications <laughs> um okay well awesome guys uh dear listeners if you have any other trade ideas that you would like to throw out please hit us up on twitter um it's mr or at greg t masterson on twitter at cody shoneman on twitter and at sweet lou mn uh you can also comment on this video please share it around please tell your friends we would love to continue building this community uh but that's all we got for you today thank you very very much and as always stay sweet